All right. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, we still have a few people joining, so it's just going to be a minute or two uh, before we officially get started. Uh, I'm glad that you've taken time uh, to come and join us and learn a little bit more about our pre-health program and some of the early assurance programs that we offer at Syracuse University. Uh, for those of you who haven't met me in the past, my name is Chris Anderson. I am the Director of Graduate and Undergraduate Recruitment for the College of Arts and Sciences. We also do all of the undergraduate recruitment for the Maxwell School of Citizenship and Public Affairs. And hopefully all of you already know that you can pretty much major in anything you want and go on to medical school as well as dental, vet, pharmacy, and a whole bunch of other healthcare options. But really tonight, the main focus is going to be uh, predominantly medical school. Certainly we can take questions about some other things, but then uh, what you can do if you come to Syracuse University to be guaranteed admission uh, in the early stages. So uh, before we move forward, I'd like to introduce uh, some of our special guests tonight. First is Dr. Lauren uh, Hunter Meyer. So Lauren, can you say hi um, and welcome everybody and tell everybody a little bit about uh, what you do at Syracuse? I am Lauren Meyer. I'm the Director of Pre-Health Advising in the College of Arts and Sciences in Maxwell School. Um, we provide pre-health advising to the entirety of Syracuse University. So I can be assigned as a pre-health advisor for students in the College of Arts and Sciences, but we still um, provide that service for the entire university. And we do that with targeted advising to help you prepare to get to the point, um, not only of earning your degree, but of um, furthering your interests in professional school. Nice. Thanks, Lauren, uh, for being here. And we're also joined by a current student, Brady. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your busy student schedule. Uh, would you mind just introducing yourself, sharing uh, where you're from, what year you are, and what studying what you're studying? Yeah. So, hi, my name is Brady. I'm a junior. I am a bio and Spanish double major with a psych minor. And yeah, so I um, actually applied to one of the early assurance programs. So later in the presentation, I'll talk a bit about that. But it's so nice to meet you all via Zoom. Awesome. Thanks, Brady. And so um, we're going to share some information. The format of this uh, presentation will be sharing information with the group. Uh, then we're going to ask Brady to talk a little bit about her experience. And then I know we have a lot of people here there. We have like almost 70 people. So it might get a little unruly to answer questions, but certainly uh, we'll answer any questions that we have. I imagine that answering questions in the chat box might get a little bit crazy. So we might try and rely on the raise your hand feature and allow people to ask questions right through the microphone. That might be a little bit more manageable, but we'll see how it goes. And uh, certainly we'll take as many questions as we can. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to, to talk a little bit about is kind of like uh, why the, the College of Arts and Sciences is the college hosting this presentation. So at Syracuse University, there are 10 different schools and colleges that offer bachelor's degree degrees. The College of Arts and Sciences and the Maxwell School are two of those 10 and they're joined together to off the, offer the liberal arts experience at Syracuse University. Now, the College of Arts and Sciences is also the college that hosts the university's pre-health advising office. So a lot of students who go on to, to health careers, they do major in the College of Arts and Sciences, but also in Maxwell. I know a few years ago, we had a student, Alana, she majored in international relations and she was pre-med. She's at Case Western um, Medical School right now. But I think uh, we see a lot of students who do want to major in biology, chemistry, biochemistry, uh, maybe a few others. And those are all in the College of Arts and Sciences in the Maxwell School. So uh, you've met us already. So these are the people here. Uh, a little bit later, we'll share some of our contact information. So if you do think of questions for us later on, you certainly can let us know. But the two main offices that are kind of being featured here are my office, uh, the Arts and Sciences and Maxwell Admissions Office. I'm a member of the Admissions Committee and will likely be reviewing your applications if you apply to Syracuse, which of course we help you do. And then uh, Lauren, she uh, works in the Pre-Health Advising Office, the director there. So she'll be working with you along the way. Uh, and certainly, you know, you never know, maybe if you come to Syracuse next year, you'll get to meet Brady and uh, spend some time with her. Will that be your senior year next year, Brady, right? Is that correct? All right, so maybe your first year could be uh, a senior year with Brady. So I'm going to turn it over to Lauren right now. She's going to talk a little bit about what her office does and how we approach working with students who want to go to medical school. Yeah, so like I said before, what pre-health advising does is help you build your um, application, essentially. 
to professional school, right? So we also serve as academic advisors for students in the College of Arts and Sciences. And so we combine these two ideas of academic advising and degree progress, right? And pre-health advising. So we'll talk about both of things, those things in some of our appointments. And a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, and Brady knows this, right? You have to show me that you have a sincere dedication to medicine and to public service, right? Medicine is a service profession. Along with that, med schools are looking for you to possess certain abilities, right? To analyze information, to solve problems, right? You can't memorize your way through medicine anymore. So you have to know where do I find this information? How do I look at this new information? You have to be able to establish relationships, not only with colleagues and other people you're working with, but with your patients. Um, communicate well, display good judgment. And one of the ways they look at good judgment is how did you plan your courses, right? What did you take when? When did you take the MCAT? When did you apply to med school? And then make sound decisions under pressure. And so a very typical interview question would be, tell me about a time you've, you've faced a problem or you've been outside your comfort zone. And they'll ask you about um, these things to see how you responded. So you can go ahead, Chris. Shown here are the AAMC core competencies. So the Association of American Medical Colleges said, what do we want to see in practicing physicians? And they came up with these core competencies, which are split into four categories. So by extension, if they want to see these in practicing physicians, they then want to see these being very well developed in medical students, and they want to see evidence of development of these in pre-medical students. And so if you look Right, lots of people will come to me and I'll say, why do you want to be a physician, which is generally one of my first questions. And they'll say, I'm good at science. And that's very true. And it's part of it. But this is one competency, right? Look under science, living systems. It's only one of these 17 things. Okay. So look at interpersonal skills, service orientation, back to that public service, cultural competence, teamwork, right? Ethical responsibility to self and others reliability and dependability, resilience and adaptability. How well did you transition to college, right? If you look under thinking and reasoning, those four competencies for me um, look like research, right? So that's also something that med schools are looking for. So now we've got kind of a list going. We've got a commitment to medicine, to public service, and to research. Probably everybody knows that med school is super competitive, right? So this is nationwide data, all the applicants to medical school. This is not Syracuse University specific. Um, the overall acceptance rate to med school is about 40%. So that means if I applied to the national average of 16 schools, I got accepted to one. That's what makes me fall into this category, okay? So you can see that, um, the number of applicants is steadily going up. The number of matriculants is staying almost the same. So the, the um, acceptance rate keeps hovering around 39 to 40%. Um, it's super competitive. To put it in perspective, the average kind of individual medical school acceptance rates for the individual schools are around one to one and a half percent the most selective undergraduate institution in the nation has an acceptance rate of about four and a half percent. So we're talking, right, um, four times as selective, I think I did that right, as the most selective undergraduate institution. You can go ahead. So what do you do to prepare yourself? First, you need to focus on your courses and your GPA, right? Successful applicants from Syracuse have GPAs in the 3.6 to 4 0 range. And these are what we call the science GPA, okay? So for those students who applied and were matriculated to med medical school in 2020, meaning they are current first year medical students, they had an average GPA of 3.81 overall, 3.76 for the science, which we call BCPM, and an MCAT score of 509, which is about the 82nd percentile, 80th to 82nd. Of course, there are prerequisite courses, but like Chris said, you can meet these prerequisites basically in combination with any major. Um, we've had students apply from economics. Psych is very common. Um, I have a public affairs student this year. So um, all over the place. So chemistry, four semesters, 
two or more semesters of biology, physics, two semesters, writing intensive courses, math, mostly statistics, and biochem. If you're interested in dental school, you're going to add microbio to that list. And if you're interested in um, physician's assistant school, you're going to add anatomy and physiology to that list two semesters. But med schools also want to see what kinds of things you're interested in, right? So take electives and show them your other interests, okay? Because if everybody just took the prereqs and everybody looked the same, that would be really hard for them to differentiate who they wanted to accept to their school. Um, so show them, right? Take a course in SOCH or a psych or show SOCH um, because that's recommended for the MCAT, the standardized exam for med school. Go ahead. You also need life experience, right? To show this consistent commitment to medicine and public service, you need to show them that you can understand what the daily life of a doctor is like, right? The day in, day out um, work of a physician and that you understand the enormity of healthcare and all the different kinds of people that go into making healthcare a success. You have to show them that you're interested in service to others. Medicine is a service profession. You have to be able to um, empathize and communicate with people that are unlike you, okay? And then your extracurriculars should be in depth, right? They should show that you have, you have meaning in these experiences, that you're service oriented, that you potentially are demonstrating your leadership ability and overall, and Brady's probably heard me say this a number of times, consistent commitment, right? That shows me what you're interested in. And that also shows me that you sh showed up when you were supposed to, you did good work and they wanted you to be there. Okay, so I take a lot from those kinds of consistent commitments. Go ahead. Okay, so we talked about research before. Research is basically a, a really highly recommended um, experience for medical school applications and dental. Okay, you need to learn to put your classroom knowledge to work. It's an it's a enough to kind of gain that knowledge, but now you need to put that out there and, and make something new, okay? You need to learn that knowledge creation is not linear. There's going to be bumps in your road. You're not always going to get things back from the lab about your patient and have a clear answer, okay? Um, you need to learn to work independently and as a member of the team. You need to develop critical thinking skills and learn how to read and write. If you ask me what I learned in grad school, I learned how to read and write, okay? And you need to learn from or benefit from that close mentoring relationship, right? Which I guess ultimately you want a letter of rec from someone who really knows you really well from that professor that you do research with. Okay. Um, now Chris is going to talk about some of our partner programs. Sorry for the delay. My computer was giving me a little uh, problem with uh, turning the mic back back, uh, back on. But yeah, um, actually, before we move into uh, into our actual programs, I just want to tack on some information about research. I meet with a lot of prospective students who are thinking about their academics and what they can learn in the classroom. But in in my opinion, research is one of the coolest and most exciting things you can do uh, in an academic setting. Because if you think about it, and I always like to say this to students I meet with, is that research is trying to solve a problem that no one else has ever solved before. You're trying to make a discovery that has never actually been discovered in the course of human history. So Syracuse is an R1 research university. And a lot of people know that we are division one for our athletics. But if you would like to come to Syracuse University and try and figure something out in biology or chemistry or biochemistry or any of our programs, in many cases related to medicine and healthcare, you can do that at Syracuse University, as well as right across the street at SUNY Upstate Medical University, as we have our undergraduates doing research there too. But uh, you know, the main one of the main topics of this session tonight is our early assurance program. And uh, I'm gonna start talking about Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. So LECOM, uh, they have a program 
where students can uh, so submit an inquiry form. And the link is actually on the bottom of this slide. We'll make sure we put it in the chat box. And you can reach out to LECOM and indicate an interest in this program, and they will review you based on the criteria that we have here on the screen to see if you would be a good fit. And that if they think you'd be a good fit, uh, they will invite you for an interview. Uh, so this is something you can do now. It's not something that you would put into the common application. It's not something that you necessarily have to do once you apply and you're admitted to Syracuse University, though that is still also an option, at least I think through the end of um, your first or second year. But right now, if you're interested in exploring this option, they offer a DO program, a Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine, they have a dental program and they have a pharmacy program. Uh, I definitely encourage you to Google LECOM uh, and read more about their programs. And then if you're interested uh, and you meet the criteria on the screen, which is a 1240 or above on the SAT, uh, 26 or above on the uh, ACT, 3.5 high school GPA unweighted or above, and then overall GPA of a 3.1 and science uh, GPA of a 3.0, uh, when you come to Syracuse University. So certainly some important things to know of there. Now, just like with, um, you know, pretty much any program, you'll have to do an interview, but this is a great program because it does waive the MCAT for D DO. Uh, the PCAT is waived for uh, pharmacy and uh, the DAT. Uh, Lauren, I can't re uh, recall. Uh, it says that uh, the DAT average uh, is 18 or above. So can you remind me, do they require the, DA, the DAT for dental? They do, so okay. yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested in LECOM, that, that's the only one where you'd have to take an entrance exam, uh, but the other two are certainly waived. Now, uh, Lake Erie, they, they have a couple of locations um, around the Northeast and, and in Florida as well. But again, if you want to learn more information about this particular program, definitely check out their website. Now, one of our Upstate Partners, um, which is just, a, well, that's kind of can be confusing. They're in upstate New York. They're not SUNY Upstate, but uh, another city in upstate New York is Albany. And uh, there's a medical college there, Albany Medical College, and they have an early assurance program. Early assurance means you will be guaranteed admission early. So typically students, they'll apply uh, maybe during their senior year or sometimes even after that, but this would allow you to gain admission to their program by the end of your sophomore year. Uh, this is somewhat of a similar program to what Brady is doing at SUNY Upstate, uh, where students would find out about their admission at the end of their sophomore year. This is just another option at Medical Albany Medical College. Uh, students who are interested in this program, they'll have to do uh, general biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, and physics. Uh, they'll have to have both a uh, science GPA and a cumulative GPA of at least a 3.5 when you apply. SAT and ACT scores are relatively high. You have to have a 1400 or above or a 31 or above on the ACT, but just like with LECOM, no MCAT is required if accepted, which we think is a great benefit. Uh, students are expected to participate in some great things outside of the classroom, like clinical experiences, community service, research, uh, this, again, is during the end of your sophomore year and through the summer. And, you know, hopefully right before that junior year, you will know if you are accepted. And then junior and senior year, you won't have that part to worry about. So that certainly could be, um, you know, a big stress reliever. And then the rest of your time at Syracuse, you would need to maintain a 3.5 GPA. So, again, this is a program for students once they come to Syracuse, not something you would have to put in the common application. Now here is the program where students can apply to Syracuse University and to medical school in the Common Application. Common Application is available right now. You can fill it out for the fall of 2021. If we have any uh, juniors or younger here, uh, we presume that it will be the same in the future. Students who want to apply to this program, the preferred deadline is December 1. If you submit your application after December 1, you will still be considered all the way up until January 1, but will be, it will be on a space available basis. So I highly encourage all of you here today, if you're interested in the Accelerated Scholars Program, to make sure you're applying before December 1. Uh, early decision applicants, if we get anybody who is applying early decision, you are only applying early decision to Syracuse, not the Accelerated Scholars Program, meaning, if you get in early decision to Syracuse, 
You are expected to come to Syracuse regardless of whether you get into the Accelerated Scholars Program or not. So something to take into consideration. If you have applied early decision and maybe this wasn't exactly what you were hoping or planning, you certainly can reach out to the Office of Admissions and make a change to your application and move it to regular decision. But we hope you have applied early decision because you want to come to Syracuse University more than any other school on the planet and you will remain an early decision applicant. Now, as far as what we're looking for, the minimum requirements are a 1360 on the SAT, a 29 on the ACT. Uh, this is important to know, and this applies pretty much across the board. Syracuse University does not require the SAT or ACT this year. It is optional. But for a SUNY Upstate Accelerated Scholars Program, the scores are still required. If you have not been able to take the SAT or the ACT, this is out of our hands. This is all uh, at the request of SUNY Upstate. So we cannot waive this requirement for you. Uh, SUNY Upstate has yet to waive the requirement. If there's any change to this, we will make sure it goes on our website. We will communicate via email and let you know, but it is required to take the SAT or the ACT and score above a 1360 on the SAT and a 29 on the ACT. We do accept super scores for these, for this program. But according to SUNY Upstate, typically the students who are accepted are well above the minimum standards. As far as the GPA, a uh, requirement is a 90 percentage in your school or a 3.5 or better. And then of course, we're gonna take a look at your extracurricular activities, looking at clinical experiences and community service. Uh, if you're admitted, <clears throat> well, let me take one step back. The process will be, you will apply. Our staff in the College of Arts and Sciences admissions office will review your application provided you meet all the minimum requirements. We will share uh, some of the applications with uh, Dr. Meyer and Lauren will review and we'll chat and then we will recommend uh, a group of students to SUNY Upstate Medical University. If you are recommended, SUNY Upstate will let you know uh, our office will also contact you and ask for your permission to share your admissions documents with SUNY Upstate. Those who are recommended for an interview to SUNY Upstate by Syracuse University will then have to fill out a SUNY Upstate supplemental application and pay their application fee of $65. So you do not need to submit a supplemental application to be initially considered. We are only requiring those who make it all the way to the final stage of what we are doing and turning people over to SUNY Upstate. At that point, you'll be contacted and we'll alert you if you need to submit a supplemental application and pay the application fee. SUNY Upstate will select students to interview and then they will accept the students based on how those interviews go. Uh, once, if you are accepted to the program, you'll need to maintain a 3.5 uh, GPA overall and in the sciences at Syracuse. You have to take at least 12 credits per semester. On average, students take 15. So that's like three credits below the normal, the, the average what you need for graduation. Now, some students might come in with AP credits or IB credits, and you might, not, might only need to take 12 credits um, that semester, but it is a requirement to maintain your full-time status. Uh, you do have some cor uh, pre prerequisite coursework. Uh, it has to get an A through F grade. You can't take it pass fail. Uh, you have a volunteer requirement, 40 hours. In important detail, there are two pathways, two tracks. One is a three plus four program where you would do three years at Syracuse University and four years at SUNY Upstate. You would have to pursue a BA in biology if you wanna do this program. Meaning in the common application, you would need to indicate biology if you wanna start off on this pathway. Any other program, you can still do the accelerated scholars program, any other major, but then it gets converted into a four plus four. So if you wanna major in physics or chemistry, or math or whatever, then you certainly can do that, but it gets turned into a four plus four. A BA in biology would be the major required for a three plus four if you wanted to do the accelerated program. Uh, you know, you can pick any major, you can do any college at Syracuse University. You know, we certainly have students who want to do health and exercise science, go to medical school, become, you know, an orthopedic surgeon or something like that. But uh, all of these uh, requirements will apply regardless. And yeah, accelerated has to be biology. Now, uh, here's the program that uh, I believe Brady pursued. In addition to the program you can apply to, 
If you come to Syracuse University and decide you want to go to SUNY Upstate Medical University, we have a similar program to what Albany Medical College offers, where you can, at the end of your sophomore year, uh, apply to be in the program. You have to have at least a 3.5 GPA as well as 3.5 in your science courses and any other pre uh, medical prerequisites. You have had to, you would have had to score a 1360 or better on the SAT or had an ACT score of a 30 or better when you applied uh, in order to be considered. Now, um, you know, this is something where, uh, you know, for students now who are at Syracuse University, if they found out about this program when they were here, you know, they may not have even been aware that there was an SAT or ACT requirement. But since you're learning about this process during the application process, this, this will not be a surprise for you. Uh, you also have to do any of the five out of any of the eight courses listed below. These are very common classes that are required across the board for medical school, so it shouldn't be a problem. But those are pretty much the four early assurance programs that we're talking about tonight. We have Lake Erie, uh, osteopathic, we have Albany Medical College, we have SUNY Upstate Accelerated Scholars Program, which you can apply to in the common application, and then the EAP program via SUNY Upstate that you can apply to if you come to Syracuse University at a future date. So I hope this is a good start. Like I said before, we'll have some qu time for questions in just a little bit, and I see that a lot of questions have come in, and we'll get to all of them if we can. But um, before we do that, I'm going to turn it over to Brady. So Brady, can you talk a little bit about some of the things we discussed earlier, just generally overall, why did you decide to come to Syracuse University? Can you talk a little bit more about how you decided upon your major and your minors that you um, you shared when you introduced yourself and like, you know, why did you pick them and what do you like about them? And then talk a little bit about the experience of doing the EAP program and how it kind of sets you up right now and how you feel about going on to medical school in the future. Yeah, of course. Um, so why I chose SU, there's many reasons. I, I would say like a big one was the R1 research because I, I have always been want, I've always been interested in getting involved in research. So especially genetic research and it's really easy through SU um, to get involved either with some of the professors here. They're very open if you email them and meet with them and talk about their research and ways you can get involved and also with Upstate as well. But I chose um, to do research in a, genetic, a genetics lab um, with one of the biology professors because I really liked what she was doing. And so that's kind of a major reason why I chose SU. Another reason was the proximity to the Upstate campus because um, I, I knew that I wanted to do some more hospital volunteering and having it right there, I could walk there. Last year I, I volunteered um, first and second semester until, I, until it stopped, but I would walk over really easy the access to the hospitals. Um, along with Krauss and the VA as well, which is a veterans like hospital. So there's many ways you can get involved in the community around here, which is great. And then also I'm from Skinny Atlas, which is about 30 minutes outside of Syracuse. So, you know, I always kind of grew up going to games and everything. And it's a great atmosphere when it is in full, full swing. So I, I really do like it here. And it, there was many factors that kind of led me to decide to come here. And so now moving on to my majors and minors. So um, I came in as a bio major and just that in the Spanish minor and just because um, in high school I always really like taking bio biology and I thought oh like I, I'm pre-med so I have to be a biology major but that's not true um, and so I was a Spanish minor because I just needed something to break up all the science classes and I've always really liked taking Spanish classes in high school and then um, through that I decided to be a Spanish major just to kind of incorporate more of that into my schedule so I was really happy about that. And then I decided to pick up a psychology minor because um, I just took a psychology class and I thought it was very interesting. So I thought, why not make it a minor, you know? So that was um, some of the reasons why I decided to do that. And then moving on to the EAP program. So I actually didn't learn about this until I was first semester sophomore year. And I was like, wow, this is a great experience because um, my older sister went to Upstate and it, I just watched her go throughout the whole process of applying to med schools and how like, stressful it was and how much time and it, it was so time consuming and expensive and just um, a huge thing for her to go through and she was like you know if you can apply to this program you know that would be unreal so I, I worked through the application for that so through that you kind of have to go through the um, pre health advising committee and they have a series of steps um, there's a whole series so they can get to know you and see your strengths and applicant and ways you can build up your application for this program and so that was very helpful and it kind of um, 
ends with an interview with them in the format of how the medical school would interview you. And that's how they kind of um, write the recommendation letter about you. And so um, to apply, it was going through that, going through the health professions profile for the committee through the school, and then also getting you know, a letter of recommendation from a teacher and a faculty member, um, and also through the committee, and then also the personal statement, which I thought was the most difficult part, because that's just always you know, a lot of writing and everything. So that was definitely the hardest part for me. And then, um, yeah, so the application opened March, I submitted it, and then we heard back in June about interviews, and then we had our interviews uh, a few months ago in um, August, and that's and I found out shortly after. So it was really a great experience. I'm very happy to um, have been accepted. And so how I feel about the early acceptance, I feel really great about it. Uh, I feel definitely like a little bit of weight has been lifted off my chest, especially because Upstate is a really great school. Um, and my sister went there, and, and she actually matched into surgery at UNC. So and she can you know speak speaks very highly of their program. And I think that Syracuse definitely helped me so much with applying to this because there's so many little steps that you just don't really know about um, and like little tips. And um, Dr. Myers was super helpful throughout the whole process. And, and um, yeah, I definitely think that if you would like to be pre-med or pre-health at the school that they have some really great programs. Um, I'm not even just saying that just because I, I go here and like trying to, I, but I genuinely think that this is a great school to be pre-med at. And um, I really enjoyed my experience so far and yeah. Any questions are welcome. Awesome, thank you very much, Brady. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're about to get into questions in just a minute, but I do wanna make sure that all of you have my email address. Uh, certainly uh, we can take questions now. We have about half an hour and it looks like we have over 30 questions already, which is great. But if you do wanna email me in the future, uh, my email address is cnanders at syr.edu. You may be wondering why we don't have uh, Dr. Meyer's email address on there. Well, quite fr frankly, at this stage, you need to be in touch with me. If you come to Syracuse University and uh, you wanna to go to medical school, then you need to be in touch with Dr. Meyer. But at this stage, uh, definitely be in touch with me. Like I said, I'm on the admissions committee. I'm gonna be the one who's gonna be reviewing for our, uh, our initial review for the Accelerated Scholars Program. So definitely let me know if you have any questions. If you do wanna learn any more about any of our majors, the college.syr.edu, that is our website. And that's where you can learn about all the different academic departments and all of the different majors. So if you do wanna learn more about biology or chemistry or biochemistry or physics or psychology, we have 50 different majors between arts and sciences and Maxwell. So that's a really good place to start to learn more about what you might wanna major in as you're going on to medical, dental, vet, or pharmacy school. And then finally, uh, the College of Arts and Sciences, we are on social media. We are on Instagram, we are on uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube. We are not on TikTok and I will not go on TikTok, that's for sure. But we have a great student ambassador group. It's called the Dean's Team. And uh, you can follow them on Instagram and see what they're doing on a daily basis. They're talking about their classes, talking about advising. We have a bunch of pre-health students who are on the Dean's Team. And actually every day of the week, Monday through Friday, in addition to this session, we offer daily information sessions. So if you'd like to come to one of those sessions, you can hear more about the overall experience in the College of Arts and Sciences in Maxwell beyond just the pre-health side. And every student who comes to one of those daily sessions, you'll get a free t-shirt. We'll drop one in the mail to you. The student on this slide is not an actual current Syracuse student. This is a student who is in high school who came to one of our sessions. He got a free t-shirt. Loved it so much, he took a picture and sent it to us and got featured on our Instagram account. So if you wanna get a free t-shirt and be featured on Syracuse University's Instagram, please come to one of those sessions. You can register for them, just like on the same place where you registered for this session, right on our, on our events calendar. So I'm gonna stop sharing now, sharing my screen, and I'm gonna take a peek at our chat questions. Uh, what we'll do is we'll start uh, and work our way down. I see a lot of questions in there. Some of them are relatively long. Uh, we might have uh, some repeat questions, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with them. And if I'm not quite sure, I'll pass them on to Lauren. And if they're more about the student experience, I'll pass it over to Brady. So is pre-health uh, mainly targeting those who want to seek an MD? What about PA and R R RN? We certainly have students who go on to PA and RN programs. Uh, Lauren, you might know MD, I would think, would be one of the most popular. Uh, but we certainly offer PA and RN, correct? All right. 
Yes, yeah, certainly PA schools, uh, we help students with that. Um, if students have an interest in RN, I think we should have a chat about what the interest is and um, try to flush that out a little bit more, but um, yeah. Awesome. Uh, can you apply to med school and dental school? I presume you're asking if you can do that at the same time. Uh, that would be a lot of work. Uh, I haven't heard of any students doing that. Lauren, do you have any know of any students who did both? I know that students typically kind of figure it out along the way, which one would be a better fit for them, either by like shadowing, getting some personal experience and seeing what they like more, but I haven't heard of any students doing both. Right, so as a simultaneous application, like I'm not sure if I like medicine or dentistry, that would be discouraged. Um, they want, the, the professions want to see a, a commitment to one or the other, and they're frankly fairly different. However, there is a pathway for people to usually get their DDS or DMD and then get their MD and then they become like um, oral surgeons, although you can be an oral surgeon without it, or um, craniofacial surgeons, so people that do like cleft palate repairs and or um, plastic surgery that also involves the mouth. All right, I knew, I knew Lauren would know, our, our guru, guru of everything pre-health. Uh, RSAT, ACT score is required for the program. I already answered that, that is yes. Uh, all right, let's see. And it looks like um, Lauren may have gone in and answered a couple of these questions. Uh, what would a pre-med track look like for those who want to go into forensic pathology? Are there any notable differences in the preparations for medical school that is not conventional, conventional profession? And that that I know of, uh, I'm pretty certain that medical schools typically require the same set of courses. Uh, one great thing that you might want to know is that in Syracuse, we have the Wally Howard Junior Center for Forensic Science. Uh, so you can get some great experience in forensics there. And then I know that we've had a number of students who have worked in the Syracuse morgue. Uh, a couple of years ago, one of our dean's team members work there. And that might be a really good way to get some clinical experience if you're interested in forensic pathology. Uh, could I apply to Upstate and LECOM? Technically you can, but what you have to decide like on one or the other at a certain point. So once you get to the point where LECOM's like, yes, we want you, then you would have to decide, okay, I don't want to pursue LECOM anymore. I'd want to do SUNY Upstate uh, because I believe they're a little bit sooner in the process where SUNY Upstate's probably going to be, you know, a little bit later, but we are going to want you to choose one or the other. But if at this point you're interested in LECOM, and you want to consider it while you're waiting to see what happens with SUNY Upstate, you might as well uh, try everything you can because there's no guarantee that you'll definitely get into the Upstate program. And we don't, you know, and there's no guarantee that you get into any pro program, quite frankly. So you might as well uh, pursue anything that interests you. And then when you get to the point you, where you have to make a decision, you might have to drop one or the other. Uh, we do not require any SAT subject tests. I have been working at Syracuse University for 15 years and I haven't reviewed a single SAT subject test during the admissions process. So you don't need to worry about those for us. Uh, looks like Lauren had a good uh, reply for pathology. Uh, our score still required this year for Albany Medical College uh, and SUNY Upstate, yes. Uh, is this program beneficial for those who want to attend PA schools? I've known a number of students who ended up deciding going on to PA programs as opposed to go into MD or DO programs. The pre-health program is definitely beneficial for that, but the Accelerated Scholars program, that is only for MD. Uh, the Med Albany Medical College, only for MD. LECOM is for DO, DDS, and pharmacy. So we certainly have great things to do to go, go on to PA programs, but I think one big thing that you'll need to know, and Lauren, correct me if this has been updated, typically PA programs require about a thousand hours of clinical experience. So that's gonna be a big difference, but we have four hospitals right across the street. So if you wanna go to a school where you don't need to have a car, you don't need to take a bus, you don't need to call Uber, you can just mosey on across the street, go to an orientation, uh, make sure you know, you're know you committed and you're not just doing like one hour every three months, then you can get some good experience and go on to PA programs. Uh, what would you do? What do we do if we were not able to take an SAT? Uh, I would apply to Syracuse University and maybe consider the traditional EAP program and fit it in once maybe it's safer and the SAT is available. Um, you know, you don't have to have the SAT to get into medical school. You just need it usually to get into early assurance programs. So if you get into Syracuse University this year, and you don't take the SAT or ACT, but you want to take the traditional route of applying to medical school during, you know, the, the, you know, going into your senior year or during your senior year, you'll still need to take the MCAT, 
but you're not going to be like banned from medical schools. It probably is going to limit your availability for early assurance programs. So again, that's out of our control. It's all up to the medical schools as they have the control there. If we do it, can you still apply to the SUNY program and send scores later? If you have yet to take your SAT scores, yes, you can submit your application. And then I would encourage if you can get them in by December 1st, you will get full consideration. If they come in after December 1st, it will be on a space available basis. Uh, are these programs MD, DO, or DDS? Uh, okay, it looks like Lauren answered that already. Uh, LECOM does not require SAT question. Um, I believe they do. Um, I think on that slide, we did have an SAT score that was posted. I want to say it was a 13. 60 is that correct Lauren we can we can bring it up back in a second actually I can bring it up without sharing my screen so let me double check on that Lake Erie actually is 1240 ACT is 26 so uh, I hope that is helpful and answers that question again I hope that I'm not repeating a lot of the things that uh, Lauren's already answered um, okay could you study abroad while in the program uh, I know students who have studied abroad who want to who are going to medical school but I'm not quite sure about how it would work for the Accelerated Scholars Program. Likely a summer opportunity might be good. Uh, Lauren, what do you think? I think we could make a regular semester study abroad work. It would just take really careful planning to make sure you've got, you have your prereqs done um, and that you're maintaining that GPA, right? You wouldn't wanna throw yourself into coursework that you've had no experience with and be abroad and then have your GPA fall because you have to maintain your GPA. So close connection with your advisor from day one would and, and let them know. All right, awesome. And I see here a comment, all volunteering has been canceled due to COVID. Yeah, um, recently over the last six months or so, uh, certainly there are restrictions and limitations, but I think as Lauren has mentioned before, we're looking for consistent uh, a commitment. So we're hoping students who are interested in these programs were getting involved with volunteering before March of 2019, uh, no, March of 2020. Uh, yeah, and we're able to fit some in before that. And then we certainly anticipate that our students will be able to volunteer again in the future. Brady, have you been able to do any clinical experiences recently or have those been pretty limited due to COVID? Um, recently, I haven't been able to volunteer. I usually volunteer at Ga uh, Galasano Children's Hospital, which is a part of Upstate, and right now it's canceled, but um, I, I'm a part of some different pre-health clubs, and we've been finding ways to volunteer virtually just to um, show a continued interest in volunteering, so I feel like that's the next wave that we've kind of been getting involved in. Um, actually, in one of my, in the, one of the pre-med clubs, we actually just spent time like making coloring pages for Galasano because like that's a way that we could get involved without you know direct contact so there are always ways in which you can you know if there's a will there's a way so we're finding ways to get creative about volunteering nice good tip thanks Brady um is the SUNY Upstate ASP program binding uh if I apply regular decision get into the program yes so if you get into the accelerated scholars program SUNY Upstate expects you to go. And since you're applying to Syracuse, we also expect you to come here. So if you choose not to come to Syracuse or you apply to any other medical school, then SUNY Upstate reserves the right to rescind your admission. So it's not like they're gonna um, reach out to like the other schools that you've applied to and got into and reported you uh, based on the honor code, but they will reserve the right to void admission if you don't come to Syracuse or you apply to any other medical schools and they find out. Uh, okay, we addressed a little bit of uh, volunteering uh, reg regarding Corona. Uh, all right, looks like um, Lauren answered that. Uh, could you take SAT, ACT as a sophomore for the SUNY Upstate EAP? I suppose if you wanted to, um, you could do that, but you might also want to uh, consider just applying as a senior and then work, spending that time uh, working on the MCAT since you'll probably have to take that anyways for the SUNY Upstate EAP program. And if you wanted to go to say like Albany Medical College, maybe that might be a good strategy, but I would as an admission staff member, I tell you to go and talk to the pre-health advisors if you were in that situation, being in your sophomore year at college and kind of wondering if you should take the SATs at that point. So uh, in the four plus four, would it be more beneficial if students were to study abroad during the summer months? Well, it looks like Lauren answered that. It looks like we probably can work with you to kind of figure out if you could go during the semester. Hopefully you're well aware. Syracuse has one of the best study abroad programs in the country. 
a lot of the opportunities that would be available to you would be based on you know how COVID is going at that time. Uh, believe it or not, we actually have students who are scheduled to study abroad in the spring. I was just talking to a student who's going to Denmark. So you certainly have opportunities to do so. Uh, it's just a matter of planning it and what like the global health situation is like at the time. So it uh, looks like we have a question that might be directed to Brady. Brady, were you able to do any research? And if so, uh, what type of research have you been involved with? Yeah, so um, in high school, I really liked the genetics unit um, in biology. So coming into SU, I was really interested in some genetics research, especially after taking the class um, genetics. So I looked on SU's website and I found some different projects going on. And so I work in the, Mac the McDonald lab on campus, which is a, um, it works with epigenetics and we um, focus on Rett syndrome, which is a, um, a genetic a neuro neurological um, disease and it currently has no cure. So we work with mice and we're kind of finding ways to alleviate some of the symptoms of Rett syndrome um, in the lab with um, mice. So that's what I'm working on and I really enjoy it. And um, forming a relationship with my um, research advisor was a great way for me to, um, that was one of my um, letters of recommendation. That's a great way to show dedicated commitment over time for these applications. Awesome. We had another question for you, Brady. How was it balancing biology with your, with psychology and, um, you know, having Spanish in there too, right? Uh, so um, how was it with all these different academic programs? Um, I think just time management is a big thing and also just having support networks. So there's a lot of different like pre-health clubs and, and different things on campus to get involved. And I think having that community and like working with people and meeting with people in the library makes studying a lot more entertaining, a lot more fun and um, kind of builds into your schedule. So I think just, yeah, finding people, finding friends in your major um, and finding other pre-med friends is a great way to kind of stay on track and, and plan out your, your study schedules and everything like that. And just also just making sure that you're taking classes and you have a major and a minor that you actually like because then it won't feel so tedious doing all this work you know maybe you won't love every class but if you're doing um a lot of classes if you're taking a lot of classes that you like then the work isn't you know it's it's more something you're interested in so it's not too bad to work on and one thing you'll find out is that syracuse university is very open to students studying more than one thing uh, we see more than half of our students choosing to double major more than three quarters of our students will have at least one major and one minor we even have some students who triple major. And right now we have a student ambassador. His name is Derek. He's doing a quadruple major. So you do not need to do all these majors to graduate. But if you have a lot of different interests, you'll be able to fit them in uh, and still have a social life and still be able to get on track to do what you want to do after your undergraduate experience. So uh, Brady, uh, here's another one for you. It's, I guess this is the Brady portion of the program, of the Q&A uh, program. Uh, were you able to study abroad at all and use your Spanish in another country or did that just not fit into your personal plan? Um, as of right now, I haven't. It, it might, maybe this summer, I'm not sure yet. With everything going on, I'm not really sure if I'll be able to fit it in, but um, definitely I'll probably go this summer or the summer after senior year, just because, you know, I really do want to live in Spain and actually get to use some of the language. But yeah, so for me, I think it's going to be more of a summer thing. But um, given that I was accepted to the EAP program, it would have made it so that I could go next semester, spring of my junior year, but um, due to COVID and everything and, you know, rearranging my schedule, I think I'll probably do a summer program or just go after college for medical school. And hopefully everyone here is gathering that a lot of what you do, it's up to you. So if you, if, if study abroad is a priority for you, we'll help you figure out if it could be a reality. If you want to do research, if you want to do internships, these are all opportunities readily available at Syracuse. It's just a matter of what combination you want to be involved with. So certainly let us know. Our advisors will help you and everybody is a little bit different. Uh, we have a question, I'm not sure if you already mentioned this, but do students do majors outside of arts and sciences and still do pre-med? Yes, uh, we did mention that. And the answer to that question is yes, students in other schools can go on to medical school. I would say, and Lauren can confirm or deny, uh, maybe engineering, and maybe health and exercise science might be some common ones. Any other ones, make, maybe um, uh, public health, is that something mm -hmm. that we're seeing more and more of? Uh, what else do you uh, see, Lauren? Yeah, public health. Um, I've actually seen a, yeah, a number of students from engineering, um, folk in general, because things migrated a little bit, right? So there's been a little bit of, of transition there. Um, and I've actually got my first ever Newhouse student. So <laughs> I'm happy about that. Awesome. All right. Cool. Uh, if you're chosen for interviews, when do they hold them? 
Will they be in person or online due to the pandemic? Uh, our understanding is that those will happen in January, February timeframe, and this year they will be uh, virtual. So uh, certainly once it's uh, safe, then they'll go back to in-person. Prior to uh, COVID, uh, SUNY Upstate explained to us that it was gonna be mandatory for in-person interviews. They were not gonna offer virtual interviews uh, in place of in-person ones. It was not gonna be accepted, but clearly uh, in the current situation, they've loosened that up a little bit and they'll be offering virtual interviews for this year. Uh, what are the next steps to applying for the Upstate program after submitting the Common App? Uh, making sure that all your materials are in, including your SAT and ACT scores, and then relaxing and waiting to hear back from us, uh, maintaining your strong academic performance in high school, and uh, just waiting to see if uh, Syracuse University and SUNY Upstate, Upstate contacts you. After that, you really don't have to do anything until you're notified that you're moving on in the process. Uh, how many seats are allocated to Syracuse students from each affiliated medical school each year? Additionally, how many Syracuse students were accepted into each program in past years? Well, that's a very specific info. Um, I would say um, we'll start with SUNY Upstate Accelerated Scholars Program, uh, just because that's uh, the one that people can apply to at this point. Uh, SUNY Upstate is looking for us to recommend somewhere around 25 students or so. And they're going to look through your materials and they're going to see who is the most competitive, what they get from other schools, what's in their overall pool at that point, and then they get to decide what they want to do. I think we can safely say that at least five, uh, and you know, depending upon if they like what's in the pool, they, I think they have the power to admit more than that, but uh, this is the first year we're doing the SUNY Accelerated Scholars Program right in the common application. We did a pilot program last year and there were just a few, a small group of students who uh, had tried it out. And uh, we certainly had students who were successful gaining admission in that pilot year. I'm not too familiar with the other programs, but maybe Lauren might be able to give some general information about like what the other schools are telling us and what we see from our end. Great, so we had uh, three students matriculate through the VCOM program, um, two for the DO, um, program and one for dental DDS and we have yet to have anyone apply to the Albany program but it's only been in effect for just under a year so these are all fairly new yeah so uh, we've had students gaining admission to medical schools for years um, you know we have a massive list of where students have been gaining admission to medical school but as you can probably see in your process more and more schools are getting connected with medical schools and Syracuse University is certainly part of that trend. Uh, actually, correct again, correct me if I'm wrong, Lauren, but these schools are actually approaching us in many cases or you know, have expressed an interest in partnering with us uh, when we mention it to them. So certainly uh, Syracuse is appealing to them because of the quality of applicants we've sent them in the regular application process. So uh, yeah, I hope that's helpful. Are these programs specific to Syracuse students? Um, they, these programs, these are our, our specific partnerships. Now, they could be mirrored by other schools as well. So like SUNY Upstate, they have a small list of other schools who also have partnerships, but it's a pretty selective group. And it's pretty much the same for all medical schools. They're not gonna be open to every single undergraduate institution out there, but these, there are certainly partnerships that the medical schools have with other undergraduate institutions. How do you differentiate between applying to LECOM and SUNY Upstate in your application? Well, you don't apply to LECOM in your common application. Uh, you only apply to SUNY Upstate Accelerated Scholars Program in the common application. If you wanna to apply to LECOM, you need to go to the LECOM website and go through their inquiry form. Uh, I will, in just a minute, next time Lauren or Brady answers a question, I will put the link right into the chat box and then you can go and check it out tonight if you want. Uh, looks like Lauren mentioned uh, some of the partnerships that we have. Um, all right, a student has uh, indicated privately to me that this has been a helpful session so far, so that's awesome. Uh, we have a question, can Brady share her achievements that helped her get into SUNY Upstate? Uh, there is a mention of statistics. I don't know if we necessarily have to put Brady on the spot to share like her GPA or anything like that. That's kind of some private information, but uh, maybe what are some things that you think Brady helped you get into to SUNY Upstate through this program? Yeah, so I would say um, just maintaining a high GPA and then also having the high ACT score. But besides that, um, my volunteer experience was a big thing that they um, talked about in the interview with me. So that was huge. Uh, and then 
also the research and then also just some other clubs that I'm involved with on campus. So um, I, I was a teaching assistant for the Honors Freshman Seminar and I think that kind of showed some leadership abilities, which they liked. Um, I'm also a member of um, Phi, De Phi Delta Epsilon Pre-Medical Fraternity and they get involved in various um, community service efforts as well as just to show that I'm part of a community of um, field individuals because it kind of shows my dedication to the field. Um, I'm also the secretary for the Rebecca Lee Pre-Health Society and that's really big on um, diversity and inclusion in the pre-health setting and creating a community that uplifts um, everybody at the school and, and achieving the common goal of, you know, and the pre-health, you know, realm of going to whatever uh, professions they decide to go to. And then, yeah, so I say those were the main things I was involved in. And then also um, definitely because these programs are more to based towards like the earlier time point in your college experience that they do ask a little bit about high school, but not a lot. So I think just also telling that, telling them that, you know, I also was really involved in service in high school and I was also dedicated to various um, sports teams. So that kind of also showed dedication. And then, um, yeah, I think just being yourself and, and telling them that you're, really interested in being a doctor and why you think you would be fitting for this um this career was is how i kind of i don't know um i'm getting the word like how i kind of like promoted myself to them but yeah i'm just i'm gonna break in as the proud advisor and just say brady was exceptionally prepared on top of everything right um application was uh, you know really a focus for her and then uh, what did we did we do like three mock interviews i think right like and, <laughs> right like so very prepared very on top of things and had that level of maturity and ability to kind of talk about her accomplishments without also seeming like um she was a little bit overblown or something about it right so really great and very prepared thank you I don't know if it's just because there are so many people in this meeting room, but every time I try to unmute, it just goes really, really slowly. So sorry about that delay there. Um, all right, so uh, let's see where we left off. Uh, how many students are, uh, okay, it looks like um, Lauren answered that question. If you don't M get the MCAT SUNY wants as an EAP sophomore application, can and will they resend your, rescind your offer? Well, I think um, that probably is an option, right? So. Uh, uh, that's something that is kind of like the last, uh, like the, the, you're crossing your T and dotting your I's. You're kind of sealing the deal with the MCAT. So that is definitely an option. Uh, there's a question, how many students are currently in the SUNY Upstate program? Are there any out-of-state students? We've certainly had out-of-state students go to SUNY Upstate. As far as how many are currently at SUNY Upstate, I'm not quite sure. I'm not sure if Lauren knows, but I know that we have a fair number of students who go there pretty regularly. So, um, you know, we certainly could get you that information after the session if you'd like to shoot me an email. Uh, what was the most val valuable class you've taken at Syracuse and why? So Brady, what's been the most valuable class that you've been involved in? Um, honestly, I, I'm on the honors program and a class that I really liked was understanding DNA analysis because it was kind of like a forensics based class, but um, it was really cool. The professor was awesome and he brought his dog in a lot. And we kind of went through a lot of cold cases and got to check out the forensics lab. So that was kind of interesting, but I would say that has been definitely my favorite class so far, but I will say the class that I'm saving for senior year that I'm most excited for is um, medical Spanish class. So it kind of blend my two majors and it's kind of a Spanish class based around pre-med professions. So that's, that's my next class that I'm really pumped to take, but there's so many great classes. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, does Syracuse offer a, genetics as a major or this fall under biology so it would fall under biology uh, the biology department has a number of different departments and genetics is definitely one of them so if that's your interest not only can you take courses in them but you can be part of that r1 research related to genetics as well so definitely a great way to build your resume and uh, help you go on and it looks like uh, lauren already mentioned uh, the genetics thing so certainly the research component hopefully that's helpful are AP and college courses considered and recognized as credit in regards to pre-med tracks? Well, typically from my experience, uh, uh, medical schools do not want to see students placing out of their pre-med requirements 
with AP and college courses taken in high school. Now, some of your other requirements, like we require some writing, um, you'll have some humanities and social sciences classes that you would need to take to graduate if you're in arts and sciences, then certainly you can use those towards some of the other things and maybe accelerate your process or uh, just have maybe a 12 or 13 or 14 credit semester. But uh, Lauren, you're the expert on this. Uh, what would you tell a student uh, as far as pre-med courses as it pertains to AP and college courses, uh, credits they earned in high school? Sure, so I get this question a lot. So if we're talking about, let's say an introductory biology, you've taken AP bio and, and that might, you might have a five in that, uh, on that AP test. Sorry, my dog is insisting I play tug at the moment um, off camera. So, um, Right, you could take that AP credit if you plan to be a bio major because you're going to take other upper level biology credits. Okay, so what med schools require is a year of biology with lab. They don't care if it's introductory biology or upper level biology. Now, the tricky part of it there is if you intend to be a bio major, you take that AP credit and then you decide, hey, I really love philosophy a lot better. Now you're, now you're going to have to go back and probably take that introductory biology. Um, but some of the other um, classes for your liberal arts core, certainly. It just depends on an evaluation once you're admitted to the college. Um, chemistry, I'm going to say probably as a chemist, right, who taught organic chemistry, like maybe take gen chem at the college level. That would be my opinion. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Lauren. Uh, if we get accepted to SUNY Upstate, are we automatically accepted to Syracuse? Probably. Uh, we can't guarantee admission until our admissions committee fully reviews everything, but it's highly likely that students who are accepted to the SUNY Upstate program, uh, probably like a week or two after they hear their official notification from SUNY Upstate after an interview, they'll likely get a notification from us that, uh, indicating they're admitted to Syracuse University. But again, uh, there are a couple of different factors that go into that, uh, as we usually want to see some senior grades and make sure that we have at least a counselor recommendation on file to make sure a student hasn't been ex uh, expelled or suspended or anything crazy happened during their senior year. So it uh, looks like we have many more questions. And I, don't, I, I, I know Brady and uh, Dr. Hunter or Dr. Meyer have lots of different things going on. So if either of you need to wrap up your night, I'm happy to stay here and answer additional questions. Brady, I'm not sure if you have homework or like there's something on Netflix that you're really uh, hoping to watch, but I do wanna thank you for, for joining us for this session. For any of you who still wanna to listen to answers or you wanna ask more questions, you are welcome to stay. Of course, if you have homework, or you want to watch something on Netflix or your preferred, uh, you know, viewing uh, platform, go ahead. But I do want to thank all of you for being here. And uh, I hope all of the students who have joined us apply to Syracuse. Of course, we hope that you stay healthy and safe, but I'm going to plug away. Uh, Lauren and Brady, feel free to check out if you have other things going on and anyone can stay with me who would like to, and we'll keep going with these questions. Uh, all right. How many... Uh, does SUNY require the MCAT still? You said you should spend time senior year so studying for SUNY for the EAP. Yeah, so MCAT is not required for the Accelerated Scholars Program, but it is required for the EAP program that you would apply to at the end of your sophomore year of Syracuse University if you did not do the Accelerated Scholars Program. Again, that's a, second, uh, a separate option for students who wait a little bit longer. How many essays and recommendation letters need to be submitted to the supplemental application for SUNY? Typically, I don't believe they ask any uh, additional questions or require any additional re letters of recommendation. They'll have some short answer questions, uh, but that's actually not provided to us by SUNY Upstate. So I'm not really sure. They only send them to the applicants. So it's kind of a secret. Uh, for the Accelerated Scholars Program, uh, okay, Lauren answered that. Uh, you got some people thanking us, that's great. Um, so if you don't get the MCAT score soon, you, okay, we did that one already. Uh, is ASP binding? Yes, if you get into the ASP program, it is binding. Uh, do you first have to be accepted to Syracuse before accepted, being accepted into LECOM? That's a good question. So LECOM has two stages. So you'll get a preliminary acceptance. And then in order to maintain that acceptance, once you get into Syracuse University, you will just need to prove to them that you've been accepted to Syracuse and it will solidify your admission to that program. So you don't necessarily like get in all at once for the LECOM program. Like you, you have like a, um, 
a combined admission to the two schools, you'll have a preliminary acceptance to LECOM. And then if you're accepted to Syracuse, then you can send that to them and you'll officially be in the program. LECOM has other partners and it's the same thing with those other partners as well. Can I send additional recommendation letters and a resume even if it's not required? Absolutely. If you want to send those in, you can send them right to orange at syr.edu which is the main admissions email address, and we'll add them to your file. SUNY Upstate has indicated they are not going to want any additional letters of recommendation. So that would really only help you with, with your Syracuse University application. Can we apply to SU Undeclared as our major? And when we get there, change to biology? Absolutely. Uh, I would definitely encourage you to come to our daily information session uh, to learn more about how you can like select your majors and what the process is like. We definitely talk about that, but you can absolutely come in undeclared and then change into biology or anything else that you think is what you want to do. Uh, if you indicate you want to be considered for the ASP, but don't submit your SAT scores at the time or your application be considered incomplete and not reviewed. So it will not be reviewed for the ASP, but once we get past that deadline, if you haven't submitted SAT and ACT scores, then we will remove that requirement from your application and we'll reconsider you for admission to Syracuse University, but you will not no longer be in the running for the ASP program. So I hope that was clear. I see at least one student nodding, so hopefully that's a good sign. To all the students who came in with your cameras on, thank you. Uh, it's so much more fun for us from the college side to actually see people who are looking at us that, as opposed to like, you know, uh, a grayed out screen with a name on it. So uh, certainly if anyone is not turned on their camera yet and you want to do so, you are welcome to. Like no pressure, you don't have to, but I do want to just give a shout out to all the students who actually turn their cameras on. That's always way more enjoyable for us. Uh, is the health humanities major a part of the College of Arts and Sciences? Because when I was signing up for this, the health humanities major did not show up under the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, yeah, actually it is. And uh, it is on our website. Uh, if, there, if it's not showing up in some place, uh, please email me and let me know or put it in the chat box and we'll follow up with that. It should be right on the College of Arts and Sciences academics page. There's a whole list of all of our academic programs. It should also be in the common application. It's likely going to be in under the College of Arts and Sciences under the humanities section, uh, not under the natural sciences section. So definitely check that out. Uh, looks like Lauren kind of mentioned that already. Uh, I put the link in there for the Lake Erie, uh, Lake Erie inquiry form. Definitely fill that out. And it looks like a lot of the rest of the comments are thank yous. So thank you all for coming to this. I hope it was informative. Does anybody know if other schools are doing this type of thing specifically about pre-med and early assurance programs? Um, have any of you gone to anything like this for any other schools and colleges? Uh, feel free to let me, I, I see no's, so hopefully that's good. Hopefully we're doing something that no one else is doing. Uh, and hopefully it's like useful and you found it to be uh, number one, welcoming and you found the people to be friendly, but also um, the information was, uh, was useful. Uh, let's see, I do have a few more questions here. Uh, if you are accepted into LECOM, do you automatically get into Syracuse? No, if you get into that first part, that preliminary acceptance, it does not guarantee your acceptance to Syracuse University. It's just saying you might be a good fit for the LECOM program. Uh, once you officially get notifi notified of your admission from Syracuse, that tells you you're definitely in, and then you can let LECOM know, and you'll be good to go for the entire full program. So let's see, looks like we had a student from Dallas, awesome. Uh, we had a few people leave. Is SU, is SU major blind? Uh, is SU major blind? I wonder if that's asking, do we admit students regardless of what major they put in the application? Uh, the answer to that is actually yes. Uh, we're also, um, when we are doing our preliminary admissions review, we're also um, need blind for financial aid. We do take financial aid into consideration during the admissions process, but that's primarily when we're considering students from the wait list. Because the students on our wait list tend to be a little bit less competitive than students who are admitted uh, than not coming from the wait list, uh, we might take financial aid into consideration then. But um, for as far as major, you know, that doesn't play a big role in our decision-making process. Uh, we want the best applicant not the best applicant for a particular major. Most of the people applying to college um, from high school, they're 17, 18 years old. So in many cases, students change their mind. So we don't wanna like have you uh, like committed to a major too early. So certainly we do look at um, students for admission regardless of what their major is in the application. So 
I think uh, make it, I wanted to apply to ASP for Upstate. Uh, I would have to apply to Syracuse first, correct? Yes. So Jason, uh, you'd fill out the common application. In the common application, there is a spot where you can indicate an interest in uh, the SUNY Upstate Accelerated Scholars Program. And then as soon as long as you do that, you will be considered for it. Uh, we will do a preliminary look to make sure you meet the GPA requirement, you meet the SAT or ACT requirement. And then if you don't, we'll reach out to you and let you know, hey, you've applied for this, but unfortunately you don't meet the minimum requirements. If you do meet the requirements, then we'll keep looking at your application. Uh, our plan right now is just to send out an email to everyone say, hey, we got your application. We noticed you're interested in ASP. We'll be reviewing it. And if you're moving on to the next stage, SUNY Upstate will be in touch. We'll be in touch to make sure we can share your materials with SUNY Upstate. So uh, I hope that helps and definitely fill out that common app uh, and then uh, indicate your interest in the Accelerated Scholars Program. So uh, yeah, my pleasure. Uh, my pleasure for, for doing this session. Uh, again, thanks all of you for coming. I hope this was helpful. I'm sure you guys have homework to do or other things you wanna spend your time on. If you have any other questions, just email me. If you haven't done so already, please come to our daily session so we can send you a free t-shirt. Uh, we love sending out t-shirts. Um, but out of curiosity, has anybody come already and gotten their free t-shirt in the mail? All right, Wilson, nice. Uh, if you want to, take a picture of yourself in the t-shirt and uh, send it to us if you wanna be on Instagram. If you don't want to, that's okay too. But uh, yeah, thanks very much. I hope you all have a great night. Can't wait to see your applications and uh, good luck in the rest of your school year, whether it's in person, virtual, some hybrid, whatever crazy thing you have going on. So uh, thanks everyone. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get to meet you in the future when you come to Syracuse. Bye.